We are in Romans, the second chapter, <clears throat> and this is our ninth uh, class that we've had on Romans. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I may be able to give you a little more insight into the path that Romans <clears throat> gives us. Um, I had told you that, you know, I would not have picked Romans straight off, but, but you know, it really does have a, a path. Um, it's not, it, it's really well ordered. But it doesn't seem like it's well ordered <clears throat> if we don't know where we're going. And so I want to talk just a little bit. I want to give you a, a, what I would call a short summary um, of what we've gotten to up to now. <clears throat> so here we go. Chapter one. Y'all remember chapter one? Our good friend. <laughs> chapter one had lists of fleshly violations against God, right? Y'all remember that? <clears throat> and with it came him declaring our known guilt and expected wrath from God for willingly going against his established order of things. Do you agree with that? Well, good, because that's what it is. However, I said this early on. However, don't agree with it in fear. <clears throat> All right. So um, chapter, two, chapter 2 started with judging as our way to lay the blame somewhere else. Verse 1 <clears throat> in uh, chapter 2 it starts this way. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever art thou that art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou uh, that judgest doest the same things. <clears throat> okay, so in verse 5 of chapter 2, we were introduced to two words. Anybody remember those words? Okay, I didn't expect it, and it's okay. Uh, the words were wrath and what? Righteous judgment. Wrath and righteous judgment. <clears throat> and if you remember, um, we kind of, I presented it in a certain way to, to get your thoughts on it and to get to, you know, what you think it means. And basically, <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't two words to you, it was to some of you. It was two of the same, wrath and righteous judgment. Wrath and righteous judgment. Wrath and wrath, righteous judgment. But how many of you know we found out something different there? Yeah. That, it, that righteous judgment wasn't the same as wrath. And it wasn't saying God was angry. And so let's see. I think I wrote it down here. <clears throat> um, uh, whether we change the image of God to earthly things like birds and beasts <clears throat> or misread those two words, we are constantly missing God's intention for us. And I, I put that sentence down because God has an intention for us. In every part of Romans, it's so beautiful, it is so precious that his heart <clears throat> is, is this way. And yet, again... Even in this fifth chapter, we're going to read a little more about, well, we're going to read a little more that could bring condemnation. But I'm just asking you to lay aside your, your old views of these scriptures and let, let the apostle take us through uh, little by little until we reach the full answer what this is about. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I wrote, so remember that Romans 2, 5 mentioned two judgments, wrath and uh, the righteous judgment of God based on being found in him, not having your own righteousness. Therefore, we can be assured that that will be the subject still continued into verse 6, <clears throat> which starts like this. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, 
Um, and, and I put in parentheses against the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. <clears throat> you see that it's very similar to chapter one and, and certain things in chapter two. But I'm telling you, you will be overjoyed. You will not believe where this is all leading. And guess where it will be found? In line in Romans. <laughs> it will be right in line so that he's, uh, and, and I, I say I'll probably get to it. I have a disclaimer. I, I, did I read it last time? Anybody remember? I did so. I, okay. You think so and someone, okay. Well, I will read it when we get to it. Okay. <clears throat> so let's begin with verse 5, um, Romans chapter 2. <clears throat> I just read it, so let's go on to verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. All right, so I want you to think about it for a minute. Um, uh, what is the meaning of... <clears throat> the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Kelly? Well, the world have done, for sure, yeah. It's, it's the bedrock of the world have done. And what, what Jesus did, the, the thing that throws us, and I understand this too, the thing that throws us is that we're so used to Jesus coming down and doing it all in the earth when that was a manifestation of something that was already true. And if you don't, if you don't hide that in your heart, it'll be a long time before you can figure out certain things because you're, you'll still be, we, let's admit it, we've been trained to think a certain way about Romans and the Bible. We've been trained to think a certain way. <clears throat> and if you look at things and let the Spirit of God begin to open your eyes like that righteous judgment of God, but this was saying, um, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and an et eternal life. That's not condemnation, is it? That's saying you're seeking after this thing. You want this. You, you, you have a witness of the Holy Spirit that there is something greater, something greater that we can, we can find ourselves. It's not something that you'll have to work for. It's not something that you will uh, have to worry about, well, your condition, you know what I mean, your condition. Your condition, you know, I can say it like this. If we're going to talk about your condition, all these bad scriptures that scare you ought to. But that's not your condition. <laughs> Good for y'all. All right. <clears throat> and I love it. To, to them who by patient continuance. See, patient continuance doesn't mean, I got to get this. You know, all this cra crazy, uh, you know, pin up, I got to get this. I'm a mess. <laughs> you're trying to get something that proves you're not a mess, not, not according to what Jesus has done and what is true of us in him. So all that flurry of, you know, you know, this is the worst day of my life and it proves that I'm the wretched, you know, whatever, good grief. No. It proves you don't know the truth as it is in Jesus yet. <laughs> you know, isn't that interesting phrase that Paul has? That was, where's that at? Philippians or, or Ephesians? Uh, that we are to know the truth Okay, yes, we gotta know the truth. We gotta know the truth. We gotta get this. We gotta know. He says the truth as it is, not as it's gonna be or as, a, as it is, where? In him. That's 
That's the truth you need. The truth of this world is that it lies to you in so many ways. <clears throat> All right, so uh, in well-doing, seek for glory, honor, immortality, eternal life, eternal life. All right, so in him, do you have eternal life? Well, then, you know, it's, it's time to put your seeking to rest. It, it, and in truth, we, we certainly won't do that in this class for a long time. You cannot imagine the areas, the, the truth, the things that the Lord has shown me that, that I, I'm just blown away with. But it is, it is holy ground. It is holy ground. All right, so um, so I just wrote uh, what we've already just said. His deeds spoken of here refer to the continuance and well-doing of seeking for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life in the Son. But as we have seen thus far, there is a judgment for those who have lived their lives in this realm based on misreading shadows and formulating their own views and ways based upon those misconceptions. This is made plain in the next verses too. All right. So you have to, this is, it's just the weirdest thing. See, to us, it's either black or white. But you have to Accept both. That in yourself, you are a mess. In yourself, there's no hope. <laughs> but in him is life. And life eternal. And so, um, and, and so let me, let me try to, let me try to, Clarify that if I can. Help me, Holy Spirit. Um, I said there's those, there's those two things. You don't want to wrestle with all that's wrong with you. You want to accept it and, and trust it in the, in the hands of Jesus and in him. This is, this is really the truth. To fight against it, to try to, to better it, only sets you back more. It does. It does. So what, what you need to do is, if he says, you know, you, you're doing this and that from the scriptures, you know, and we used to, you know, we used to hear it and go, yeah, I know, you know. Now we say, yes, that's true. That's, that's true of me before I was found in you. But that's that's true. And, and if he said, he said, he pulled out a scroll and, and he said, okay, I want to read to you how bad you've been. You probably should say, I, I admit it. I need you, Jesus, but it's more than I need you. You have him. All right, so... Um, All right, let's, let's uh, go to verse 8. <clears throat> but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. All right, so in chapter 1 particularly, we saw the Gentiles... We saw, because there were no Jews at that time, you know what I mean? And uh, um, we saw the, the bad things said just like this. And, and what we saw was that uh, they were continually accusing someone else and covering up themselves. Can we say that? Can I, can I say without a show of hands, how many of you have covered up something that you were guilty of and maybe even 
put it on somebody else and they got the blame. How many of you have done that? Okay. There's well, you notice my hand was up. You know, that's not good, right? But guess what? We admit it and we say, that's but you've you've got something more coming and 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 we understand that if i start covering up or if i start doing all of this stuff all it's going to do is keep me from from the world of done it will because you're still living on the earth you're still judging on the earth you're still covering up on the earth you're still here so why not be free not be free. <clears throat> um, so I, I wrote, what is the sin of these contentious ones that we just read in um, chapter, I mean, uh, verse 8? <clears throat> it is that they don't obey the truth. And what is the truth that they are not obeying? It is that they are not holding to the truth of the righteousness of God in Christ. Do you think Romans is only going to keep going until all of this area? Well, it's not going to be done with because he's, it's this, our failures, this area of it is so important to the real, to reaching the reality of the world it done. It is. Sounds counterintuitive? <clears throat> it's not. And, and, I, and I'll just go ahead. I don't think I've said anything along this line yet. But there is a place that we will be reaching fairly soon that you're going to see that, um, that he has laid out before the foundation of the world this plan that didn't just include us being found in him, but of working it so that we would see our need for him. And it's even better than my words can describe right now. So when we get to it, you go, oh, that's what you, were, that's what you meant. All right, so um, remember that earlier back in um, Romans, <clears throat> we had our first mention of the Jews. But now in verse 9, we begin to delve a little more into the subject of Jew and Gentile. And we will, whether it's in Romans or not, because there are, there are better places to dig into this, there is a difference. There's a difference between a Jew and a Gentile. The Jews uh, were given the law. Gentiles were never told to keep the law. Y'all should be happy. <laughs> Y'all should be happy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, verses 8 and 9. Reinforcing the fact that unless a person has found God's true understanding of the righteous judgment of God found in his son, then that person, regardless of being Jew or Gentile, will receive the same harsh punishment, but on a different basis. It appears that it will fall on the Jews first, based on all the past favor and opportunity God had bestowed upon them throughout history, does that at least make sense that that would be the case? <clears throat> but we know, you know from knowing the scriptures that it's to the Jew first, then to the Gentiles. <clears throat> All right, verse 10. But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. All right, so again, that because of our, we've trapped all these doctrines in, into our brain and everything, we constantly read things 
that pertain to something else as, in most cases, as judgment. I mean, that's, we see a lot of judgment. And we're, you know, trying to work through that. And I'll tell you what, <clears throat> Romans, <clears throat> before we reach that sweet spot that I'm talking to you about, he's intentionally laying it on you. I mean, if you, if you go back and you read what we've already read with the condemnation, it's not just, well, you know, you're bad and you mess up. It's like, you know, death and destruction. It's not, not those words, but it's almost like that. And, and horror is going to come your way and everything. And you're going, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll try harder. <laughs> Wrong solution. <clears throat> um, So um, <clears throat> positive judgment is assigned to all who have sought out the substance, but negative judgment upon all that stayed with the shadows in their own imaginations, whether they be self-justifications, judging, or changing the actual meaning and explanations of the true as God set it forth. <clears throat> now, that was my own statement. And there was, quote unquote, condemnation there. Did you see it? And I, I do realize that every time I do that, you're going, I was just about to get it and, and stay with it. And then you say this is going to pop up again. Well, so does, so does Romans and so does the rest of the New Testament. <clears throat> Still? <laughs> You still need to hold on, hold on to every little tweak that the Holy Spirit gives you. Because when we get to a certain place in Romans, it's just going to be like a wide path to the Lord with no hindrances at all. But again, it's important for now that you take the slap and turn the other cheek. And say, I'm with you, Lord. All right. <clears throat> oh, here's my disclaimer. Uh, I've got it in my iPad here. <clears throat> I've got it outlined or, or, or underlined. Uh, and I've got a little demon-looking purple head. And then i got a red-looking guy. And then i got another purple demon looking head and then skull and crossbones with the words disclaimer so let's find out what this disclaimer is going to be <clears throat> it needs to be realized that the book of Romans as written by Paul is progressive in its understanding it needs to be understood that Romans, as written by Paul, is progressive in its understanding. Now, there's more to that, so let me read it. <clears throat> along the way, he sets forth truths, and they're truths along the way, that will become obsolete later because he brings in greater realities later that have circumvented them, such as with the law. Okay. Um, so I, let me finish it then. <clears throat> In the early chapters, the law is presented as valid, <clears throat> while later it isn't. If you try to make every chapter the end all truth, if you try to do that, you say, well, this is, this is the end. You need to keep reading. Keep going through it. Don't stop, because for sure, even what we've read thus far, you know, yes, you know, you're, you're a bad person and you deserve death and all this kind of stuff. And Yeah, absolutely. But if that's the end of it, I ain't reading Romans. <laughs> you know? 
So let me finish this sentence again. In the early chapters, the law is presented as valid. Is it not? Yes, it is. <clears throat> it's also presented as not valid <laughs> in the early chapters. <clears throat> um, while later it isn't. If you try to make every chapter the end all truth, then you will remain under condemnation. For example, Romans 3, 20 through 22 says this. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, <laughs> but, but now, <laughs> But, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Is that not a powder, powerful stand, saying? But that's in chapter 3, and we're still in chapter 2. But it is, the, and that's down to verse 20 is the, what, where that starts. <clears throat> so what, so we're not even going to, I don't think, get a very, uh, we're not going to get a break <laughs> until Romans 3, 20. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure that's true, but we'll see. Okay. All right, I have a subtitle here called The Setting Forth of the Law. <clears throat> and this law is a big thing, right? You know that. The Jews are a big thing. The law is a big thing. It's a big thing. But I, as I said, in this place over here where he's talking, it, it's got a whole different connotation. And over here, it's something different. So by the time we start getting up to that place I just described to you, that I read to you, he's going to settle down <laughs> and he's going to say, I, it's almost like this, he won't say this, but I did all of this to you because this is what the way God showed me and God did all of this to you to get you to his truth, his life, his, his freedom pure freedom. All right. So, Romans 2, 11 and 12, the setting forth of the law. <clears throat> For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Okay, so, that doesn't sound very encouraging, does it? There's no way out. You could say, well, I, I'm not a Jew. I, I'm, he goes, oh, don't worry, you messed up without it. And the Jew goes, I'm a, I'm a Jew, I'm of you, I'm, I'm with you. We, you know, we're your people and all this stuff. And he goes, you blew the chili, and it's the same thing. I'm no respecter of person. Not just in judgment. He's no respecter of persons. Not just in judgment, but in blessing and in covering and in filling and so much. So, um, Verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now that's really an important statement as I remember from where we're gonna be going. That's a real important statement. <clears throat> I'll read that again, verse, this is verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just, or what does that mean? Justified. Not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Okay, so now he's talking to the Jews, right? <laughs> and he's going, you know, all the stuff. Just picture a Pharisee for a few minutes, okay? And he's saying, look, you know, all the, you know, 
all that you can quote of the law does not justify you, Mr. Pharisee. It's those that, uh, what's, not the hearers, but the doers of the law. Okay. So, <clears throat> we're still, we're still, are move, we're going to move on from this place, remember? Yeah. It's important to remember this is ongoing. It's like a road trip. <laughs> And, and uh, so when you hear these things that always bothered you, and, you're, and, and some of you, most of you probably have help called your mind that will automatically read it wrong because you haven't fully seen what's coming. <clears throat> um, so... Uh, For the first time, not just the Jews, but the, uh, but the law has been introduced as another supposed means of dodging judgment. The Jews used the law as a means of dodging judgment. And you can see it with their conversations with Jesus. And what are they doing? They're also turning it on Jesus. Um, <clears throat> Let me just reread this, this one. For the first time, not just the Jews, but the law has been introduced as another supposed means of dodging judgment, not just the method of judging which we have previously discussed. Well, you know, the, the Pharisees were great at judging. And what was the basis for the most part? The law was the basis for their judgment. And they thought, and, and we'll read more here, but and they thought because they had the law that that's what justified them and because God gave it to them. But, but Paul's going Paul's to jump into all that too. All right. Up to this point, sin was framed mainly in the context of fleshly sin. But with the introduction of the law, which was given by God to Jews to obey, Right? God gave the law to the Jews to obey, right? Y'all all know that? I have a question for you. Where in time did he give them the law for them to, to keep? At Mount Sinai. It was there that he gave them the law. Do you think he was happily giving them the law? When they broke it, which God, God wrote the first version, right? I mean, it's the same version, but God was the one who made the first tablets of, you know. I mean, I have a tablet right here. And anyway, that's, um, he, what was, what was the condition of the people? What was the condition of God when that happened? When God gave the law, the holy law to holy people, holy Jews like walking around during Jesus' day, Pharisees and priests and everything, they're all, you know, um, and they're saying, obeying this law is our claim to fame. <laughs> yeah. They were <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And the second one was written in stone. Stone. I mean, you think about at that at that point. I mean, I was thinking about this earlier that that um, uh, and it'll be a big part of what's coming up. <clears throat> but you, you know, the scripture says that if you if you break the law in one point, you've broken the whole law. Right. 
Well, the very giving of the law and the very things that caused it to be given, they had broken it. The first set of, you know, even though God threw it down, he threw it down and said, it's broken. So they've broken it in one place. So they've broken it all. And yet they still continue to believe that we have to keep this. All right. <clears throat> now, again, this part right here, this is early. We will, we will get into, I mean, Romans is so good in this area with, you know, <laughs> it's so good. Um, but it's, it's important that we catch these things that are, you know, could slip right past us. <clears throat> so, um, and the keeping of the law was seen by the Jews as a way of being just before God in terms of doing in terms of doing, in terms of doing. In other words, sin was no longer just found in the context of fleshly acts like the Gentiles had in chapter one. Gentile, sin, um, Gentile sins, uh, messed up my sentence here, Gentile sins were based on how God was treated or not honored. <clears throat> and that's goes back to the birds and the this and that, and they didn't they left the image of God and make sense? All right. So verse 14 and 15. <clears throat> Again, notice how often the word law is used. <clears throat> okay. You ready? Don't, you don't have to read this. Just look up here at me, and I'm going to clue you. Okay? For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their heart. He's already said and shown and will do it so strong um, that the law was, see, I don't want to say it with my mouth yet because it'll, it'll spoil the surprise. <laughs> Whether you agree with this or not, I don't know where it was. Maybe it's a Texas legislature, but they they decided <clears throat> that in all the schools and public or uh, official places, they're going to put a thing with the Ten Commandments on it. And I know probably 95% of the Christians are going, yeah, that's what God wants. He doesn't want the law, people. He doesn't. I mean, Put Jesus saves or something up there worthwhile, but but the Ten Commandments. And if somebody went up to that monument with the Ten Commandments, was a sledgehammer and start going clang and knocking it all down until it was crumbled, they would walk up and go, "This is sacrilege." Well, God did it, didn't he? <laughs> that's old. That's the Old Testament. That's not us. I'm just, if, does somebody have something you need to say? <laughs> uh, let's see, point, counterpoint. Anybody? Okay. Well, if you think of one, feel free to come to me. <clears throat> I'm telling you. The book of Romans is going to trample those ideas. So maybe we should finish Romans class before we make too many judgments ahead. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so um, this is talking about the Gentiles. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. And this is not talking about, oh, they're... they're um, uh, 
you know, if uh, somebody's uh, cow falls in his ditch that he's going to, well, it's not, <laughs> it's, you know. This is talking about the conscience, and he'll, say, he'll show that here. Um, <clears throat> do by nature things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves, which God is not after us being a law unto ourselves which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Did that turn bad quickly? <laughs> I'll read it again. <clears throat> For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, as a matter of fact, you know, I don't know. Well, maybe I'll wait on that. Lord, you show me for sure. Um, <clears throat> these having not the law are a law, and they're a law unto themselves. That could be said lawless. You say, well, what if they're doing good things that somebody would do in the law, but they're just doing it on their own? It's you. It's you. That's why it's so important, folks. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ lives within me. The, the goal of Christ in you is his life and nature. The goal of being in Christ is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Their conscience also bearing witness. <clears throat> and I know that you, <clears throat> you probably, <clears throat> um, I'm not going to get into this right here, uh, but a long time ago in some of our classes, I shared on the conscious, conscience. And I showed in the scriptures that God is not wanting us to live by, it. your conscience at best should bear witness if it's really the Lord. Do you remember where that scripture is? Yes. <laughs> Romans 9. <laughs> that, your, that your conscience bearing witness at best should be uh, just a, a witness. Yes, 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 another witness. But we're supposed to have something greater. Greater is he. What? Where? 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 He that is in us. Then what? He that's in the world. <clears throat> All right. So, Romans 2.15, notice the phrase, their thoughts, their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. This was what he was talking about in Romans 1 that the Gentiles do. It was their only covering they had. They didn't have the law. Well, I did something good yesterday according to the law, so I'm not as bad as you because you've never done anything good according to the law. In the meanwhile, accusing, pointing that finger at somebody, and excusing, pointing it back to you and excusing yourself. That's being a law unto yourself. It is, yeah. <clears throat> so, and remember, uh, so far in Romans, we've hit several places where it was talking about, you know, judging. And, well, this is judging, you know. So we're still on the same thing. Ch remember chapter 2, which we're still in, began with the judging thing. All right. <clears throat> so um, the apostle intends to keep pressing against our tendency towards judging. Their judgmental thoughts towards others pertain to accusing. But pertaining to themselves, it involves Excusing, <laughs> excuse me, yeah, I'm done here. <laughs> Excusing, remember these things have been avenues for men to feel justified. 
Okay. So um, a, a Jew might say, well, I, I read the Torah every day, um, and I'm, you know, uh, see, anything I say is not going to be near as good as what's coming in here. So it's, okay. Uh, but, but you don't. You're a Gentile. And then he'll, you know, the Gentile will go, well, you, you spit on the sidewalk and I've never spit on the sidewalk. It's both means for accusing or excusing. It's judging one another. It's judging. How many of you think that you still have a judging problem? Raise your hand. I think we probably all do still. You know, but we're, you know, this is just so wonderfully cool. Where we're heading in all of this, there will be no need for some of this stuff. I mean, you, you'll be so secure that you, you, somebody says, well, you did so-and-so, and you went, you know, I really did. And I actually kind of was being a smarty. Uh, when I when I did it, but you know, forgive me to that person, and Lord, you have already taken that away. I I just I just confess. If you confess, he's he's already faithful and just. Just do you understand that? The righteous. Righteousness of God just means he's already righteously dealt with all of that. He died for it so that it's not an issue. You can't dig it out somewhere. And so there is, there is a, the Lord willing, there will come a time for all of us that so much of this stuff is like scales falling off of us, you know, so that we can just be real, you know. You don't, you, you, I, I just love that scripture though. You know, if, if you confess your sin, well, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm faithful uh, and I have done this thing in a just manner where my son died and paid the price. And it's already forgotten. But he wants you and he wants me to be able to say, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Um, be, beginning in verse 14 through 29, Paul seems to refer to the Gentiles as the real Jews and of the actual Jews as merely breakers of the law. Do you get that feeling that he's, he's kind of, you know, um, <clears throat> and I, I put... Uh, Breakers of the law, based on what? Based on the, based on the fact that the law, in its stone form, was never meant to be the way of justification, rather, be the way of condemnation in relationship to the conscience. Your conscience bears witness, and it, and you're, you know. I mean. I mean, it's it's easy to to shut down somebody who doesn't have a conscience. You know, if you have a conscience, it can mess with you. But you have a, you also have a high priest. Just so you know. And he's seated, by the way. <clears throat> um, let's see. I'm going to have to read that over. Beginning in verse 14 
through 29, Paul seems to refer to the Gentiles as the real Jews and of the actual Jews as merely breakers of the law. Based on what? Based on the fact that the law in its stone form was never meant to be the way of justification, but rather be the way of condemnation in relationship to the conscience. Now, I am going to end this, but I want to, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't do this. I want to just show you, if nothing else, on my iPad, I have, after I'd read that, in big letters, it says, my questions. And with two arrows pointing down and about 25 red question marks. I'm, I wrote a bunch of stuff going, well, if that's true, how can this da 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 and da 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 da, you know, and, uh, st you know, a lot of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and um, so I, I went through this battle in that little portion there about the Gentiles because I couldn't see, you know, it, it just, it felt, here's what it felt like to me. It felt like the apostle to the Gentiles was sticking his nose into the Jewish stuff too much. <laughs> but that's what it felt like. I'm, I'm looking at him, I'm going, aren't you the, gen, the, the apostle to the Gentiles? Why are you? bringing up all this stuff, you know? And of course, we know God brought it up. But nonetheless, some of the angles that he was coming with, the, with what he was saying, I was just, you know, writing it out and going, I don't, to me, <laughs> this was that. It, I consider that healthy. I consider it healthy. I consider it healthy to be able to question. You don't have to believe everything I share in this class or any class or anything I ever say. In fact, if it has to do with the class or the Word of God, I encourage you not to believe anything I say until you look it up in the Word of God and go, oh, oh, it does say that, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> um, because, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't being horrible in it, but I was a little indignant <clears throat> because I didn't know, and I knew I didn't know, and it was, it was, it was bothering me that why can't I see this? Well, the only, only thing I've seen in all of these notes that he's given me is what he's shown me. So he decided to pull back and let me go, well, what does this mean? I mean, you, sh you said and when I got through, I closed my iPad and I went and did something else. And the next morning when I pulled it out, these red question marks <laughs> across the thing. And I said, I'm so stupid. Forgive me. I don't, I, I don't know this and I'm lucky to even hear what you're sharing with me. I don't know these things. I'm, I, I'm a vessel and you're just shooting it through me. But I want to know for these sheep, for us, that we might know you better. And so down a little further from all this, because there's, there's a bunch of red here, he started talking to me. <laughs> And when he got through, I went, well, of course, of course. But I tell you, I, I have been in the ministry since I was 21. And I've never heard anything like this. And it's, it's clearly in the word. And if it keeps saying it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, then it's time to say, Lord, open my heart. Not just open my eyes, open my heart. All righty. 
Mike, my brother, love you, man. <laughs> oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Father, we really don't know anything. None of us do. Not, not anything yet as we ought. <clears throat> but you know that our hearts are hungry and you know that for many of us, we feel, oh, we feel the, the vibe, the verberation of your spirit who wants to break forth stronger with these things. And Paul must have felt those same things as he was writing this book. And yet he faithfully stood with you in the path, didn't run ahead, so that when the stones were laid, they would be permanent. So I ask you to, Jesus, good shepherd, feed, feed your sheep. Feed your sheep. Minister to the weak. Open the eyes of the, of the blind. Carry the, the lame until it's all clear from your spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're done.